Dear brothers and sisters, today I'm going to speak to you about uh, a great work, a book called True Devotion to Mary, uh, written by St. Louis de Montfort. I'm going to give to you a sort of um, general summary of this book and also speak to you about its effect in my own life. Uh, St. Louis de Montfort was a great priest. Uh, he lived in the late 1600s and the early 1700s, um, a catechist also, somewhat of an itinerant preacher. Um, he endured a certain degree of persecution in his life, and in the midst of that persecution, um, it was as if God was molding him and bringing forth the great fruit of his life in some of his writings. He wrote many good books and various uh, small writings. Um, some of you may know his book, The Secret of the Rosary. Um, he has another small one called The Secret of Mary, uh, Love of Eternal Wisdom, The Friends of the Cross, and the one I'm going to speak about, True Devotion to Mary. Uh, this book, True Devotion to Mary, is probably one of his most powerful works. Um, it's a method of cultivating a living relationship with Our Lady. Um, many Catholics have been moved uh, by this book. Um, Blessed Pope John Paul the Great, a great saint of our times, um, his motto, Totus Tus, as Pope, comes directly from this book of St. Louis de Montfort, True Devotion to Mary. Uh, Blessed John Paul the Great says that he read this book four times, or perhaps even more, um, and then he made his consecration to Our Lady. And that's a good lesson for us. Uh, this book, uh, you should get it and you should read it. Uh, read this book and then make your consecration to Our Lady. It's a key to the interior life of Blessed John Paul the Great. St. Louis de Montfort, when he wrote this book, he predicted that the devil was going to do everything he can to thwart um, the message of this book being spread throughout the world. Uh, he said that the devil would try to hide the book. And it's interesting to note that this actually happened. Uh, St. Louis de Montfort died in 1716, and this book was not discovered until 1842, uh, a long time after he had written it. It was hidden away in a chest somewhere. But even today, not many people know about this book. Um, it's unfortunate, but Catholics should read this book. It's really important in our walk with the Lord. I knew nothing of this book until one year after I was ordained to the priesthood. I knew nothing of it. I may have heard about it, but it never registered with me. I had never actually uh, held a copy of the book until a year after I was ordained to the priesthood. If I, as a priest, did not know nothing about it, then many people we know today can fall into the same unfortunate set of circumstances of not knowing about this great book about Our Lady. I came to this book um, a year after I was ordained to the priesthood. A dear friend of mine in the priesthood, also from the Society of Our Lady of the Most Holy Trinity, or SALT, a very well-known preacher, um, told me to go to Rome and spend time with his religious community. And when I got there, one of the great priests of this community told me that if I want to be like Pope John Paul II, because he knew I loved John Paul, he said, you have to read this book. And he handed me a copy of True Devotion to Mary. Um, not this exact book, but uh, a different version of this book, but this is it, True Devotion to Mary. And I came back to the United States, and I began to read this book up one side and down the other. There were times I actually went outside into a tent to be away from any distractions, and I read this book, and I focused on what it said. I made my consecration, according to the formula in this book, in August of 2005. And I want to read to you the actual formula of the consecration that I made. Um, I made this, con this consecration in a place called Providence, Rhode Island. And I was in the presence of this great preacher, this priest from uh, Salt, a dear friend of mine to this day. And I made this consecration in his presence, in the presence of other people, but most importantly, in the presence of Our Lady. And I began by saying this, Hail, O Queen of Heaven and Earth, I, Father Jason Worthley, a faithless sinner, renew and ratify today in thy hands the vows of my baptism. I renounce forever Satan, his pomps and works, and I give myself entirely to Jesus Christ, the incarnate wisdom, to carry my cross after him all the days of my life and to be more faithful to Him than I have ever been before. 
In the presence of all the heavenly court, I choose thee this day for my mother and mistress. I deliver and consecrate to thee as thy slave, my body and soul, my goods both interior and exterior, and even the value of all my good actions, past, present, and future, leaving to thee the entire and full right of disposing of me and all that belongs to me without exception, according to thy good pleasure for the greater glory of God in time and in eternity. That's what I said in my consecration to Our Lady. Um, I'm going to give you a talk about this book, um, a general talk about it, and then tell you what it has meant for me in my life. But before I get into talking about the book, I want to read to you from the Gospel of St. John, chapter 19, verse 17 and following. So they took Jesus, and he went out, bearing his own cross to the place called the Place of the Skull, which is called in Hebrew Golgotha. There they crucified him, and with him two others, one on either side, and Jesus between them. Pilate also wrote a title and put it on the cross. It read, Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews. Many of the Jews read this title, for the place where Jesus was crucified was near the city and it was written in Hebrew, in Latin, and in Greek. The chief priests of the Jews then said to Pilate, Do not write the king of the Jews, but this man said, I am the king of the Jews. Pilate answered, What I have written, I have written. When the soldiers had crucified Jesus, they took his garments and made four parts, one for each soldier, also his tunic. But the tunic was without seam, woven from top to bottom. So they said to one another, Let us not tear it, but cast lots for it to see whose it shall be. This was to fulfill the scripture, They parted my garments among them, and for my clothing they cast lots. So the soldiers did this. But standing by the cross of Jesus were his mother, and his mother's sister, Mary the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing near, he said to his mother, Woman, behold your son. Then he said to the disciple, Behold your mother. And from that hour the disciple took her to his own home. After this, Jesus, knowing that all was now finished, said to fulfill the scripture, I thirst. A bowl full of vinegar stood there, so they put a sponge full of the vinegar on hyssop and held it to his mouth. When Jesus had received the vinegar, he said, It is finished. And he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. Now that, brothers and sisters, is the moment when Christ saved us, when he saved the world. And he says in that moment, Behold your mother. He gifted us with his own mother, and then he said, it is finished. It's as if he had to do that before he would save the world. The moment when the hope of heaven is given to the world, Christ says, behold your mother. He could have said that at another time in his life. He could have said that when he was a child in the temple, or he could have said it when he was preaching, behold your mother. No, he says it on the cross. It's one of the last things he says, behold your mother. So. We learn, therefore, that devotion to Mary is very important, not a matter of indifference. Devotion to Mary is not an addition to Christian religious belief, not like something extra. Devotion to Mary is not something that some Catholics came up with. It is essential in following the Lord Jesus Christ. Devotion to the Virgin Mary was introduced into the world by Jesus the Lord himself. It comes from Christ, not from anyone else. And no one was more devoted to Mary than Jesus. Think of his life. He spent 30 years in her home. And from the incarnation to his death on the cross, they were inseparable. And in all the great moments of redemption, Our Lady is there at the side of Christ. And no one was more devoted to Jesus than Mary. That relationship is crucial to understanding what St. Louis de Montfort teaches in True Devotion to Mary. 
If we want to be Christians, we must love Our Lady. Jesus wants you to love and honor and serve His Mother Mary, to go to her, to go to Mary, your mother, to see her as your mother. And that is the language of relationship. It's more than devotion, but it's a living relationship. She is our mother, according to the will and plan of Jesus. Some people, they become afraid of devotion to Mary. They say, if I'm devoted to Mary, it's going to take me away from Jesus. And that's inappropriate. Well, that would be, but that never happens. Jesus gave us devotion to Mary. It's part of His plan of salvation. And you cannot deny that. It's right in the Scriptures. Now, the book by St. Louis de Montfort uh, contains within it a 33-day uh, preparation of prayers and readings and works for your consecration to Our Lady. Um, I'm very grateful, and it's almost um, a sign of God's providence to me that in this time that I'm recording, I have another priest friend who is on the internet in evangel new evangelization, uh, Father Sam Medley. Uh, he's a great priest from Our Lady Society and he preaches often on the internet. And I've just realized that he's doing a series of talks on, on YouTube, I think, um, of going through the preparation for the consecration to Our Lady according to the method of St. Louis de Montfort. So it's almost as, as if these two talks uh, kind of work together. I'm going to give you a more general overview of this book. Here are some key quotations that I just took out of the book to share with you. The first line of the book is this. It was through the Most Holy Virgin Mary that Jesus came into the world, and it is also through her that He has to reign in the world. Keep that in mind. How Jesus came into the world is Mary, and how He is to reign into the world is through Mary. When Mary is unknown, Jesus Christ is not known as He ought to be, St. Louis tells us. Now that language is already the language of a living relationship. We have to know Mary. It's not enough to be devoted to her. We have to know her. When you know someone, you have a relationship with them. Um, a living relationship. And if we don't know Mary, we will not know Jesus as He ought to be known. The saint goes on to say this, If then, as is certain, the knowledge and the kingdom of Jesus Christ are to come into the world, they will be but a necessary consequence of the knowledge and the kingdom of the Most Holy Virgin Mary, who brought Him into the world for the first time and will make His second advent full of splendor. That's the second coming of Jesus that St. Louis de Montfort was talking about, saying that Our Lady is involved in preparing that, just as she was in His first coming, when He was incarnate in her womb. These words were written in the early 1700s, before Fatima, in 1917, when Mary came, said we must do penance and pray the rosary. Before Lourdes, in 1858, when Our Lady revealed herself as the Immaculate Conception. Before La Salette, in 1846, when Our Lady revealed that sin greatly offends her son Jesus. Before Paris, when Our Lady gave us in 1830 the Miraculous Medal. In these apparitions approved by the Church, Our Lady is preparing us for the coming of Jesus at the end of time as Judge. And these apparitions fit very nicely into what Saint Louis de Montfort said many years before they even happened. Now, St. Louis speaks of the Kingdom of Christ and the Kingdom of Our Lady. Every kingdom has its enemies that want to overthrow it and destroy it. The enemies of Christ's Kingdom, the devil and his servants. Safety is in the Kingdom of Jesus Christ. Now he's the King of the Jews and as Pontius Pilate declared on the cross, Jesus Christ, King of the Jews. And in Jewish antiquity, the Queen was always the mother of the King, and that's the Virgin Mary. She is the Queen of this Kingdom, so in her we find our safety from the enemies of the Kingdom of Christ. The essence of this consecration to Our Lady is giving everything to Jesus through Mary. To Jesus through Mary, we say, in the tradition of the Church. Um, I give everything in my life to Our Lady. Mary is the way 
that Christ chose to come to us. And so it's logical that she remains the way that we go to Jesus. Go to Mary as queen of our hearts. That's what we do. We take her as our queen. Queen of our hearts. What's that mean? It means that we submit ourselves to Our Lady. We see her as in a place of supreme authority. She is our queen and we must be her subjects. St. Louis says, Oh, how highly we glorify God when after the example of Jesus we submit ourselves to Mary. If she's queen, we submit ourselves to her. But it's after the example of Jesus. He submitted himself to her. Listen, Christ is the King of kings and the Lord of lords. He sustains the universe, visible and invisible, in being. He is the King. He is the Savior. For 30 years, He humbled Himself and listened to Our Lady in their home in Nazareth. The consecration is to be perfect and entire of ourselves to Our Lady. The motto of Blessed John Paul the Great was Todos Tus. It's right from this consecration. Todos Tus Aigus Sum Maria et Omnia Mea Tus Sunt. I am all yours, O Virgin Mary, and everything I have is yours. Everything. So I consecrate, we, we consecrate in this, in this relationship to Our Lady, we give her our body, our soul, our exterior goods, such as our health, our home, our job, all of our relationships we give to Our Lady. We, everything that we have, past, present, and future, we give to her. We give to her our interior goods, such as our good works, our virtues, our prayer life. We give it all to her. We hold nothing back for ourselves. St. Louis says of the person who consecrates himself to Our Lady in this fashion, all he suffers, all he thinks, all the good he says or does belongs to Mary, not to us, but to her. This relationship to Our Lady is primarily interior. It's within. Yes, we have exterior manifestations of it. Here I have a beautiful statue of Our Lady, Our Lady of the Most Holy Trinity. Um, in this room here right now, as I'm speaking, in front of me to the right of the camera is an image of Our Lady of Fatima. And on this wall is Our Lady with the Child Jesus. And over here is a little statue of Our Lady of Lords that someone gave me years ago. So wherever I look, I see an image of Our Lady. It's exterior, but it brings forth an interior relationship to her. Every time I see an image of Our Lady, um, I say interiorly, I am all yours, O Virgin Mary. Todos tu sagus sum Maria, et omnia mea tua sunt. And so I feel surrounded by this interior growth in my relationship to Our Lady. It comes from the mind and heart, this devotion to Our Lady. St. Louis says, it flows from the esteem we have for her, the high idea we have formed of her greatness, and the love which we have for her. Those are things of our heart towards Our Lady. This consecration brings us to have full confidence, not in ourselves, but in Mary, in her. Listen, she's the queen of heaven and earth, so we have nothing to doubt with regard to her. We can have full confidence in her. She will help us. She will provide. This consecration is holy. That is, it leads a soul to avoid sin. And it sort of is a great means to overcome temptation and to turn away from your sins. And the devotion to Mary is constant. Keeps us on the course in following God. Steady as she goes right into the kingdom of heaven. When you make this consecration, you make the consecration, but it's supposed to develop in your life every day. The effects of this true devotion to Mary, uh, one of them is kind of difficult for us to hear. Knowledge and contempt of self. Knowledge and contempt of self. Now people hear that and they think, I don't like to hear that. I, I don't want to be depressed. I don't want to have a bad view of myself. You're telling me that if I do this consecration and live it, I will know myself and despise myself, despise what I know about myself. Um, but remember, this is in the context of a living relationship with Jesus and Mary. Uh, it's not all alone. So it's something we're moving towards. Not so much away, away from a thing, but towards something, towards someone. If I think that I am great, if I think that I'm the best, 
I'm going to seek to serve myself and not God. But if I have a humble view of myself, say, listen, I'm a poor sinner and I need all the help I can get, then I will seek the help and grace of Christ, His Word and His grace coming to me in the sacraments. I will seek to serve Jesus, not myself, and to serve Him in others. The great St. John the Baptist, the final prophet, said, Christ must increase and I must decrease. And so that knowledge and contempt of self brings us into this great love and confidence of Our Lady. This true devotion to Mary allows us to participate in Mary's faith. The more we are one with her, the Blessed Virgin Mary, the more we will live by our faith in Jesus Christ. That's what she lived. She lived entirely by her faith in Christ, by her living relationship with the Most Holy Trinity. Nothing else really mattered. She had many other things in her life, but the greatest was her relationship to God. And we want to live that, because that's what we're going to live in heaven. True devotion to her delivers us from scruples and fears that we can have from time to time in our lives. Yes, we may still encounter them, but these difficulties don't oppress us. They don't govern us. We have now a freedom in our soul, and it comes from Mary. And then this consecration brings about great confidence in God and in Mary. We don't approach Jesus alone, but with Mary. That brings us a great confidence in our relationship to Christ. We don't have to figure it out all alone. We are now with Our Lady. If we're not too good at our relationship and our spirituality to God, Mary is there to help us. Since I give everything to her, my confidence is not in myself, but it's in her. If I put my confidence in myself, it's insecure because I'm a poor sinner, operating under, under the weight of original sin. But Our Lady is free of all that. I put all my confidence in her. Guess what? I go on with great joy, with immense joy, because I put my confidence in a safe place. These here are just some general considerations about this great book, True Devotion to Mary. Now you should read it. Um, this one is put out by Tan Publishers. It's a great book. I think they just reproduced it, republished it in a new version, um, which contains more things in it to help you in your consecration. But you have to read it. Some people, they make the consecration without reading the book, but read the book so you know what you're doing. I want to share uh, briefly my personal experience of this consecration to Our Lady. I made my consecration in Providence, Rhode Island, in August of 2005. And when I think about that now, it's as if God was telling me in that city that He will provide through Our Lady. And I know that. I've experienced that. Um, it was a 33-day set of prayers and readings and works to prepare for my consecration, which we have to renew each year. Every year on the anniversary, we do that 33-day preparation. But we renew it every day also. Um, when I see Our Lady's image anywhere, I say, Todos tus sum, I am all yours. So I'm constantly renewing my relationship to her. Const I'm constantly giving everything I have to her. Everything I have. So nothing builds up for me. I don't hold anything to myself, but give it to her. Whatever experiences I have, whatever things I have, whatever difficulties and works I need to do, I am all yours. Everything I have is yours, O Virgin Mary. And I've experienced that this relationship grows. It has to bring us into a living relationship with Mary, into a knowing of her, and to experiencing her motherhood. Um, it's not just we make the consecration while well set, but it's a living relationship that grows like any other relationship. I can tell you for sure that I feel now that I know Mary more today than I ever have in my entire life. And she is filled with the grace of God, full of grace, the angel said. So we can constantly grow in our knowing of her, in our love for her, in our understanding of her. I've been a priest for seven years, and I feel in my priestly experience there have been two major periods. Now, theologically, there's only one period. Um, my ordination, I'm a priest forever. That's one period. 
but I've experienced in my work as a priest, my life as a priest, two periods. The first one was from the day of my ordination until a year after that. So May of 2004 to May of 2005. And the second period was the day of my consecration to Our Lady up until now. I really feel it's a second period in my life and um, it's constantly growing, this relationship to Our Lady. I now live as a priest, not alone, but I always move in all of my things in life with Our Lady. Wherever God's providence leads me and whatever He calls me to do, I do it now with Our Lady. But it's because I keep giving myself to Our Lady each day according to this consecration. It's a real gift and I have experienced the motherhood of Mary and I feel that you will as well if you make this consecration and try to live it. No more living our relationship to God all alone, but now live it in union with Our Lady. I want to conclude with a quotation from St. Louis de Montfort. The more we honor the Blessed Virgin, the more we honor Jesus Christ. Because we honor Mary only that we may the more perfectly honor Jesus, since we go to her only as the way by which we are to find the end we are seeking, which is Jesus. God bless you.